Howdy. I want to talk to you. I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me. As soon as I can get that squared away. I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me the other day here in Monta. I had to go to the immigration office to get my permanent visa. I hired Gringo Visas to help me with this visa process when I got my original visa, my first temporary residency visa. And I use them to get the, the permanent one. When I went to the immigration office to, to file all the paperwork and to pay the fees and so forth to get my visa, I took the representative with me from Gringo Visa, girl named, very nice girl named Erica. She went with me to help me and, and also to interpret and to make sure that everything got done correctly. The immigration office that we went to is right around the corner from where I live. It's like down a block and then down another block. So it's close by. But you know, when you when it's when it's hot and you have to walk from here to there, it seems like a long ways. But what happened, we we got there, we had to take a number, like we always do, we had to take a number and wait for our number to be called and then we go and sit in front of a small booth and, and there's a glass partition there and then there's the immigration official on the other side. He starts shuffling through all the paperwork and writing numbers down, you know, and doing all this and that and, and then he gives me a little piece of paper with a you know, with a dollar amount on it and says, okay, you have to go to the cashier and pay that. So I said, okay, no problem. We went to the cashier and we paid. And of course the cashier says, you know, asked if we had exact change because it was the start of their day and they didn't have any change in their bank, which is very common here. Lots of people don't have change. Fortunately, I was able to come up with the exact change and I paid him, got a receipt. We went back, sat down in front of the gentleman and he started putting all his paperwork together and doing stuff on his computer and then writing notes and, and then giving me papers to sign and so forth. He requests to see a copy or request to see my passport. I pull it up, give it to him. He wants to see the previous visa that I have the previous visa, okay? And of course I didn't have a copy of it with me. And so he tells me, you know, he tells us basically he he condemns me for not having my visa with me and pretty well chastised me for by saying, you know, you, you have to have your visa with you if you're gonna live here. You know, and my, my answer was, well I have a cedula. I you know, why why should I carry my visa with me? I don't carry my visa or my passport with me. And, but there's no big deal. He said, okay. I said, it's, it's no big deal. I can run over and get it. So I get Erica to wait and Erica waits for me. And I walk over to my apartment, get this old copy of my original visa, which by the way, folks, on his computer right in front of him, he has my visa. He has the old one but he wants to see my original paper copy of my visa, the actual paper that I got in the email a year ago, two, almost two years ago. No big deal. So I came home, got it, went back, said, here you go, gave it to him. And then he's shuffling around more paperwork and he gives me another piece of paper of $5. I had to pay a $5 cancellation fee to cancel that visa, okay, because I'm getting a new visa. So then we had to go back to the cashier to pay that $5 fee. No big deal, went and paid him, got the receipt, went back, sat down in front of this guy again, and then he says, I need a copy of your passport. 
he had a copy of his, my passport in his stack of papers, but he wants a copy of my passport. Okay. I, and we asked him, so what, what about your cop? Isn't that good enough? No, that wasn't good enough for him. He wants me to give him a copy of my passport. I said, no big deal. I got a copier, you know, at my home. And of course, I mean, you know, I have my passport in my hand. I have it right there, but he wants a copy. He wants a paper copy of my passport so he can put it in his files. So I walk back over here to my apartment and I make two copies. I have a copy printer right behind me here. I make two copies of my passport and then I walk, I, he only wanted one, but I made two just in case. Dad used to say, you make two in case you drop one. Walk back over there. This is the second trip now to my apartment. One block over, one block down. It's actually two blocks. It's really, it's, it's two, it's the equivalent of two blocks down and two blocks over. So I'm going to get back. Now this time, now I've got sweat and I'm perspiring. And I'm thinking, well, we got home, but I don't have to do that again. My car was down there. I could have driven my car, but it took forever to get a parking place down there. So I just left the car there and I walked. So anyway, I gave him the copy of the passport. Okay. So he's shuffling through all the papers, putting everything together. Now he wants to see the passport. He, he wants to see he wants to see this the actual goddamn passport guess where it was it was in my copier here he wants me to get my passport and show it to him and the girl Erica basically begged him Please, he has two copies of it sitting in front of him, and this guy, this jerk, wants to see my passport. He went ahead and ex he could see that I'm really uh, rattled by now. I mean, I'm sure I was turning red, and I'm calling Stella on the phone and asking her if she can talk to somebody that we know there and see if they can make an exception and not make me have to walk back over here to get this passport and she's I'm getting angry and yelling at Stella and Stella yelling at me and the other girl that we know there she's yelling at me and telling me settle down settle down the guy finally gives in and agrees to go ahead and accept the fact that he had a copy of the passport in front of him and he made do with that and we end up having to pay another fee for something. I don't remember what the, that one was for. But I end up paying all my fees and gave him all my paperwork that I need to go next week to get my, my cedula. This guy didn't have to do that. He could have easily, in the first place, in my opinion, he could have easily made a copy of my passport for me. He had a copy right in front of him. Less than a foot away from him was a printer, copier, almost identical to the one I have. But apparently they can't do that. Or he just didn't want to. He's being an asshat. And I'm telling you this to tell you that when you get here, you're going to run into situations like this from time to time. I don't know if it's just that they're disgruntled government employees and they're just not happy and they don't want to help us. They do not want to do anything. When I had, when I went back the second time to get, you know, copies, to make copies of my passport for him, when I came back, we had to wait 15 minutes for him to finish his lunch hour. He had a 30 minute lunch hour, lunch break, and he would not I, I wanted to say, here, here's your copies. Can we go? Are we good? He wouldn't even talk. He's like, basically, I'm still, you know, I'm off the clock. So that's the way it goes. That's what happens. Now, could this have been avoided? I believe so. And, but the reason why I had to go through this bullshit to get my visa 
applications because I didn't give Gringo Visa a power of attorney to just let them do all this stuff for me because that's how I got my original visa. I was here in Monta, they were in Cuenca. I got a power of attorney giving them authorization to, to represent me and do everything for me and I sent them my passport and I didn't have to go with anybody. I didn't have to go in front of anybody. Didn't have to see anybody. Didn't have to do an interview, nothing. This time I didn't want to spend the 90 bucks for a power of attorney and get it notarized and all that kind of stuff and I paid for it. It cost me more than $90 in aggravation and in anger and making me say things that I shouldn't have said and didn't want to say that I normally wouldn't say, but that's the way it goes. And I want you to know about that. that if you come here and you don't want to pay the price, you're going to pay the price one way or the other. So next time I will do the power of attorney. I know a lot of you are going to come back and say, oh, Don, I used a facilitator and I didn't have to go through all that stuff. And well, I don't want to hear that. Okay. That's not the purpose of this video. It's not, this video is not to get into a debate over how to get your visa. I did it the way I did it. And that's the way it happened. But I'm telling you, you're going to run across people like this where they just absolutely do not want to do anything for you. And you just have to live with it or you just don't get your visa. So that's it. Sorry, no introduction today. No bite me, no nothing. I'm just telling you this. I do want to say that Monday's video is posted. It will be available Monday morning at midnight. It's about sex, drugs, crime, and politics in Ecuador. It's an interview with GM Ace, my buddy in Puerto Viejo. It's 40 minutes long but I broke it up into two parts and also indexed the video. So if you look in the description, you can see an index of everything that we talked about. I asked some good questions of GMAs and I got some good answers and maybe you'll be interested and maybe not. But if you don't want to sit and watch a 40 minute video, you can go into the description and you can click on the time stamp for the subject, the question that you want to see an answer to, and you can skip all the rest. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.